Amen. He can work with that. That's right. Little food is stretched when it's given to Jesus. Amen. Leftovers are stretched That's right. in the hands of Jesus. Amen. After he had fed the gigantic, the gigantic, gigantic multitude, Amen. they took up 12 baskets of leftovers. Amen. Verse 12 and 13 says, after everyone was full, uh -huh. Jesus told his disciples, now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So they picked up the pieces and filled 12 baskets of scraps yes. left over by the people yes. who had eaten. Yes. Jesus did not wish to waste anything, and he does not wish to waste any one of us. Amen. To throw out the leftovers mm -hmm. would be throwing out part of the miracle. Amen. Amen. Just because someone else may have thrown you away or have seen you as useless or doesn't think you're important or doesn't give you the attention that you think that you need, you're not a throwaway to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus can still work with you. That's right. Jesus Will. can still use Switch you. Around. Yes, yes. If Jesus has touched you like he touched the bread and he touched the fish, you are a miracle. Yes. He does not want any part of you wasted. That's right. If you have been broken, bring your fragments to Jesus. Yes. And he, has got, he will gather you up, yes. put come you on, in a on. basket, yes. and yes. put you back yes. together again Amen. and use you for his glory. Amen. 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 Yes, thank God for the leftover. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. If he's touched you, <laughs> even if you felt worn out, even if you feel tired, if you lost your zeal for God and you lost your zeal for life, guess what? He can still use you. That's right. That's Jesus right. told them to pick up the pieces. Yeah. He wants to gather up your pieces. Amen. He wants to pick those pieces up. The pieces that others and even might have felt worthless. Amen. He'll make something out of those scraps. He'll use your scraps to bless somebody else. Will he not? Amen. That's will right. he not? Yes, he will. Are we all scraps? Mm -hmm. Did That's Jesus right. all, when we were lost, did he pick us up and put us back Amen. together again? Amen. And do we now have testimonies yes. of how God put the scraps back together Amen. again? I was all over the place. I had a piece here and a piece there and a piece and a piece and a piece. But God took up those pieces and he put me back together again. Amen. Put me back together again so well that I didn't even know myself Amen. when he got finished. Amen. I had a, 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 an epiphany one morning when I was going to work because I was just doing it just mundanely, wasn't really paying much attention. I was basically just existing Come because on. I had been through so much at the time, Come but on. God had called me and said, I was, he said, it's okay, I'm going to help you. Come on. And so I said, okay, God, I trust you. And after about a month or so of me, I mean, I was just on, on God like, like uh, people on crack. I was in my word. I was going Dick to church. I did not Dick leave the sight of God. My sister Nikki was in strong in the word. Mm -hmm. And when she went to church, I went to church. When she went to Bible study, I went to, she was my, my Ruth and I was her, she was my Naomi and I was her Ruth. Wherever she Amen. went, I was, I was right there on her side because I knew that I needed and God knew what I needed because I was in, broken into pieces. Come on, come on. And one morning God stopped me in the midst of me preparing myself for work. And he made me look at myself in the mirror. Mm. And when I looked at myself in the mirror, I did not see who I used to be. Oh, I saw the most beautiful woman I have ever looked my eyes upon in the world. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I began to cry. And I began to weep because I said, only God can do something like this. So that's why when the song of God of miracles come on, my God, my God, it gets in my soul. Yes. Because he is my God of yes. miracles. Yes, he is. I am a miracle. Yes. 
Yes. You are a miracle. A miracle. That's right. Amen. That's Come right. on. Hallelujah. Yes. Now let's look at the text in Genesis. All right. We're going to go to chapter 6. We're going to start at verse 17. And this is, this is God. He's talking to Noah. He says, look, I'm about to cover the earth with a flood My that God. will destroy every living thing that breathes. Come on. Everything on earth will die. Mm -hmm. But I will conform, I will con confess, I will confer my covenant with you. Amen. So enter the boat, you and your wife and your sons and your and their wives. Being a part of every, bring a part of every animal, all male and female, into the boat with you to keep them alive during the flood. Pairs of every kind of bird, animal, and every kind of small animal, their scurries along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. And be sure to take on board enough food for your family and for all the animals. And it said in verse 22, so Noah did everything exactly yep. as God had commanded him. So now we're talking about some leftovers here. Yes. Have you ever had a catastrophe in your life? I'm not talking about just a flood or Come a fire on. or anything like that. Come but on. Noah Come on. and his family were remnants, were leftovers after a catastrophe. Amen. Amen. They were saved out of all the millions of the earth. God chose that family yeah. as the remnant. Amen. And, and why do you think he did? Look at verse 22. It says, so Noah did everything. Everything. Exactly as God had commanded him. That's right. So he was the only one that could be found faithful on the earth. He was the only one God could really trust on the earth. So he saved them as a remnant. Hallelujah. God gives the left. And then look at. Uh, look at. Uh, where is that verse at? Look, I'm about to cover the earth with a flood that will destroy every living thing that breathes. Everything on earth will die. Look what God does to, with the leftovers. Amen. God warns the leftovers yeah. before he makes them leftovers. My God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God also has a plan for the leftovers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Before they became leftovers, Amen. He had already put the plan in place. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then, on top of giving them a plan and warning them, he preserves them. Amen. So if your life is taking a couple of turns and twists that you're not too sure about, don't worry. God has a plan. Amen. Amen. Have you ever experienced a catastrophe in your life? Yes. It doesn't have to be anything like a flood or a fire or any kind of natural disaster. It could be a divorce. Mm -hmm. It could be a breakup. Come on. Yeah. It could be a loss of a job. Come on. Yeah. It could be a loss of a family yeah. member. Yep. It could be anything that Amen. interrupts your daily flow of your life. Yeah. That's a catastrophe. Yeah. When I fell into depression, that was a catastrophe for me. Yeah. Because I didn't know how to function as I normally functioned Amen. anymore. Amen. That was a catastrophe. Amen. If you and you, if you, if you have and you still are experiencing a, a catastrophe, <laughs> then you're just a leftover. You're a remnant for God's keeping glory. Amen. Somebody say, I qualify. I'm qualified. I'm qualified. Hallelujah. You survive. If you survive what you went through so that God can now use you to preserve others, <laughs> maybe you're facing a catastrophe. Maybe you are the remnant that he has chosen. Somebody say, thank God for the leftovers. Thank God for the leftovers. Now, God warned them before the flood, right? Amen. Has God ever shown you something before it happened? Yes. 
Amen. I have a best friend who has been hooked, who was hooked on drugs for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And she and I, she moved way away, and you know, we had some words and we weren't talking. And one night, about two o'clock in the morning, and y'all know I love my sleep. God interrupts my sleep and tells me to get up. Uh -huh. Pray for this young lady. Get up at two o'clock in the morning, God, and pray. And I'm mad at her. No, I don't want to pray for her. My God. No, Come nevertheless, on. speak the truth. Come I on. got up. Come on, do what you And say. I prayed. Let's get. And he told me to walk the floor. My God. Okay. Come he on. told me to walk around in my apartment, and he told me to pray. He said to pray a warfare prayer for this young lady, and I began to pray, and then I began to go in a in the, in the Holy Spirit. I began to pray in the tongues. I don't know what I was praying, but I know that it was something very powerful that I needed to pray. And I didn't have the right words, but the Holy Ghost had the right Amen. words to say it. Amen. And you know what? I had to pray until it was time for me to get ready to go to work. I could not go back to sleep. Yes, sir. Come Amen. On. That's right. Amen. But in my spirit, I knew something was wrong. God was showing me something that was going on with her. Now, I didn't know exactly what it was, mm -hmm. but the next day, that next night, around about midnight, my phone rang. And my phone number's been the same for years. And guess who it was? My friend. She was crying her eyeballs out. And I said, what's going on? What what's, what's, what's going on with you? She said, I said, wait a minute. Why are you crying? I said, what is going on? I said, what was you doing last night at about 2 o'clock in the morning? What were you doing? And she just began to cry even harder. And she said, my God, Trey, I was on a bridge. Mm. And I was about to jump. My God. And I said, what? And she said, yeah. She said, I said, so I'm not trying to be smart or anything. But I, why didn't you jump? What kept you from jumping? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she said, I don't know. So it felt like something just put their arms around me and grabbed me off the bridge. It wouldn't let me jump. My God. And I began to weep and I said, girl, that was God that grabbed you. Amen. That was God that grabbed you. I said, I prayed for you last yes, night. Yes, yes. God had me praying. I said, bad as I was at you, he had me up praying for you. And I thank God. Won't he do? Yes. And I was obedient. sure that uh, when God was telling Noah mm -hmm. what was about to happen mm -hmm. <laughs> he didn't understand everything that was going on either Amen. but you just got to continue to trust God because yes. yeah. you might be the remnant that God uses to preserve and save some family member or some friend you may just be the remnant allow God to give you a plan and then, just as Noah did, mm -hmm. we need to carry out that plan. Even if it takes years to see what God has told us that's going to come to pass. See, when you can't see what God is saying, you just have to wait. Amen. You just have to wait on him to show you. Sometimes you may not see it. But oftentimes he'll show you. Amen. Do as he instructed you to do and do not get off course. That's, that's right. See, if I had gotten back in the bed, or if I had laid in the bed, I would have fallen asleep. If I were in the middle of the, of the prayer and said, look, I'm tired, I'm going back to bed. I don't know what's going on with her, but I'm going back to sleep. Instead of listening to the, the instructions That's that it. God said, he get didn't up. say lay in the bed. He up. said, get up and walk. That's and right. I had to get up and walk. And when I felt tired, I couldn't go back to bed. I had to continue to pray. Amen. So sometimes you got to press. Yeah. Yeah. Press. Press your way. Come Just on. keep going until God gives you the relief. Yeah. Amen. Oh, thank God that I'm a leftover. Glory to God. Amen. 
Glory to God. Yes. Doesn't have to make sense to you. When, you. when you can't see what God is saying, just trust him. It doesn't have to make sense. I'm sure that God has given you things that didn't make sense. Amen. But the, in the end, they turned out like, oh, now I understand. That's right. See, Noah was asked to build a big old cruise ship. <laughs> a big old cruise ship in the middle of the desert where it so. never rained. Now, I'm sure that made no sense to Noah. <laughs> but nevertheless, he was obedient, and we all know how the story turned out. Because of Noah, we're here. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Because of Noah, we are here. Because of that remnant, yes. we are here. Amen. So Amen. today, God is looking for an obedient remnant of people. Yes. People yes. who will obey his word at his command. Amen. No questions asked. Just do it. It don't have to make sense. They didn't say in the Bible that Noah asked God a bunch of questions. Come on. Well, God, what you mean what build a boat? What is a boat? Yeah, yeah. I never seen a boat. I don't know. Well, what is this thing, God? And why am I building a boat when there's no rain, there's no water, there's nothing? God, you just got to go with the flow when God tells you something that doesn't make sense. Amen. Amen. That's right. Let us be that obedient remnant that God Hallelujah. can use on the earth today. Hallelujah. In these last and evil days. Can, can God find a remnant? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at Amos chapter. Y'all mighty quiet in here. Amen. Jesus. All Jesus. right. It's good. It's good. Amos yep. chapter 9. It's good. We're looking at verse 12. And Israel will possess what is left of Edom. Somebody say there's that leftover. Leftover. And all the nations I have called to be mine, the Lord has spoken. And he will do these things. Uh -huh. Well, y'all might ask, well, who is Edom? I asked. I, even though I still knew who he was, I asked anyway. Because uh -huh. I knew somebody was going to ask. So, in the Bible dictionary, it says that Edom means red. And is derived from the name of its founder, Esau. Who is the older brother of, the, of our Hebrew patriarch, Isaac. Because he was born red all over, so that's why his name is Edom. And as a young adult, he sold his birthright to his brother Jacob Come on. for some red yeah. porridge. Uh -oh. So then Esau, after he did this, becomes an enemy of God. Amen. Why? Because the things of God was not important to him. Food was more important to Come him on. than the spiritual things that God had placed in order. Amen. So this was the nation descended from Esau who had despised his birthright from his father. He despised the spiritual part. So let's look at this though. So now God uses the remnant of Edom the leftovers of those who rejected him uh -huh. to bring forth an entire nation of people who's going to worship him. Amen. Someone who rejected him, yeah. he now uses to bring people to worship him. Yes. Not just a few people. Oh, God. God brought a whole nation of people for someone who rejected him. Yes. Amen. Amen. He can use any kind of leftover. That's yeah. right. He can use Anybody. any kind all over the world, the descendants of Edom are now starting to come back to God. Oh my God. The whole world from the country of China are becoming Christians. Amen. And year after year, more and more people are becoming Christians yes. Yes. from the descendants of Edom. My God. Somebody say remnant. Remnant. Somebody say rejected leftover. Rejected leftover. But God can still use me. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You may feel like a rejected leftover. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Edom didn't realize that when he rejected his birthright, how mightily God can still use him. Amen. Hallelujah. Rejected leftover. 
Amen. Glory to God. I Amen. know some of y'all might, I don't know what you feel, but I know I feel and have felt <laughs> like on. rejected Come that on. over. Yes. Yes. But when God resurrected me, baby, yes. I knew yes. I was somebody. Not because of who I am, but because of who God is. Yes. I might be a rejected let go. You might not like me. You might think I'm loud. You might think I need to sit down somewhere because I'm mad all You're great. Yes. God thinks you're fearfully and wonderfully Amen. made. Yes. He sent his only begotten son to die for you. Even though you wasn't even thinking about God, he was thinking about you. You better not put yourself down. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Come on, walk over to me to the New Testament. Come on. Come on, Second Corinthians right. yeah. chapter 5. Yeah. Since we're talking about newness. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to look at verse 17. This one little verse. Just one little verse. And I'm reading the New Living. It says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Yes. The old life is gone and the new life has begun. Yes. So here we go. We got some leftovers here. Hallelujah. In this passage of scripture, Paul talks about the before and the after process of a yes. man or a woman yes. who comes to Jesus. Yes. We have been beaten up by Satan. We have been used and discarded by Satan. Yes. But when we come to the Lord, my God, my God, he takes that which Satan has left and kicked to the curb. Because you know after Satan finishes using you, he just kick you to the curb. Right. Leave you out to die. Yeah. He don't know God got a plan. So after he's done his thing with you, That's right. God comes in now and transforms us, Satan's leftovers, yes. into new creatures. Yeah. After Satan had dragged, Satan had dragged me through the to the mud. After he had took me to hell and back. Come on. <laughs> God took my leftovers and transformed me into a new creature. Amen. Gave me a new life. Yes. The things that I desired before, when I before I became into a relationship with God, I no longer desire. Yes. Amen. And Amen. see, the enemy will trick Grace. you, yes. and he will tell you, yes. "You better not get saved. You better not come to God because you ain't gonna be able to go to the party no more. Come you ain't on. gonna be able to drink." drunk no more. You ain't gonna be able to smoke your Amen. weed and get Amen. high no more. Amen. You better not get saved. You gonna miss all the fun. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's the truth of the enemy. Come on. Tell him. Tell him. See, tell God's him. leftovers don't want to do all that kind of stuff yeah. no more. You know what I'm Great. saying? Great. He don't tell you that part. Yeah. He don't tell you look when your you get saved. Will God's gonna change your life. That's right. You might think you like partying That's right. and smoking and drinking and getting drunk, yes. but the real you, who yes. God, the remnant that's yes. inside of yeah, you, yeah, yeah. will no not part, no part desire of all of that yes. stuff. Yes. Come on. Amen. Amen. Don't be tricked by the enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. See, there is a miracle in yes. the leftovers. Yes. Yes. If you saved, sanctified, filled yeah, with the Holy Spirit, go. you are a miracle. Yes, Amen. I know that some of y'all might be sitting there thinking, well, how does that apply to me? Mm -hmm. When you're taking about the drinking and the smoking, well, because I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I'm fire baptized, and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Right. That might be true, mm -hmm. but guess what? <laughs> You wasn't born like that. Come on. Amen. Amen. You ain't been that way all your life. That's right. That's right. Glory to God. Before God saved you. Yes. Or me. Yes. We were just little pieces of junk sure. left over. That's right. But sure. praise be to God. His grace took us. Yes. 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 And made us into a whole meal. Yes. And now he can use us to serve somebody else. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He can turn leftovers that Satan used into something that he can use for his glory. Hallelujah. When you were in the world and you were lost and you hated yourself and you hated everybody else, 
God just take, he took your hate and he gave you hope. Hallelujah. Amen. He took the leftovers Amen. and he made it something that he could use. Amen. You see, when you were lusting in the world for yeah. things that you were lusting for, things, people, whatever, yeah. God took that lust and turned it into love. Yeah. Love for yourself. Love for him and love for other people. Yeah. God can use a leftover. song Amazing Grace. Yeah. How sweet the Amazing. sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God for saving me. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah, one time we were all lost. But yeah. thank God for the leftovers. Yeah. Thank God that he has something left to work with. Yes. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Come on. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I know about God's grace. Amen. Yes. And see, the thing about God's grace. Yes. He may be over here giving Mother Glover some grace. Uh -huh. That's it. Uh -huh. He may be over there giving Sister Alicia some grace. Yes, yes, yes. But now here the pastors are over here. Uh -huh. And they may need some grace too. Amen. All the time. Oh how much? How many of y'all know mm. that that God yeah. has some grace left over for them too? Amen. God can use some leftovers. Yeah. God can work some leftovers. He don't run out of nothing. He don't. He don't say I ain't got enough. That's right. Uh uh. If I if I grace her, I can't grace you. Come on. God has enough grace much left more. over for us all. Much Hallelujah. More. Yes. He can grant mercy over there. Yes. He has enough mercy left over for everybody. Yes. There is a miracle yes. in leftovers. Yes. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now let's look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus. And somebody say, Leftovers are important to God. Leftovers are important to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Second death of Thessalonians chapter 2. Uh -huh. We're going to look at verse 1, 2, 3. Now, dear brothers and sisters, let us clarify some things about the coming of our Lord Jesus uh -huh. and how he would be gathered to meet him, how we will be gathered to meet him. Don't be so easily shaken or alarmed by those who say that the day of the Lord has already begun. Don't believe them, even if they claim to have had a spiritual vision, a revelation, or a letter, supposedly, from us. This is Paul talking to the Thessalonians. Mm -hmm. Don't be fooled by what they say. For that day will not come until there is a great rebellion against God, and the man of the law and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the one who brings destruction. Uh -huh. This passage is a warning. It's a heads up from God. It shows that before Christ's return, there will be a great falling away. A great abandonment of from truth. And Satan himself will be engineering the decay of the church. Amen. Are we starting to see this happen? Amen. Amen. It's true. Have we seen Amen. it? Are we Amen. seeing it? They're trying to take God out of everything. Everything. That's right. My God, you can say Buddha. Come on. You can say Muhammad. Come on, preach it. You can even say Allah. 
Right. But you better not say Jesus. Come on, come on. Come on. Why can't you say Jesus? <laughs> Timothy, you know. <laughs> Why? If you can say come Buddha, on. Muhammad, and Allah, Jesus. what's wrong with me saying Jesus? Right, yeah. right. I'm going to tell you why. Because at the name of Jesus. Every knee. Come on. Every knee. Every tongue. Every tongue. Buddha going to bow. Allah going to bow. All them going to bow to Jesus. That's right. Amen. That's why they don't want you to say Jesus because there's right. power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Buddha don't bring power. Allah don't bring power. Muhammad don't bring. But Jesus brings power. Yes. My God. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. My God, this scripture right here shows us the importance of why we have to be the remnant that God has placed here on the earth for these last and evil times. Yes. We've got to stay the remnant. Yes. We've got to be the leftovers. That's right. When people start to fall back, yeah. when, when, when people in your family that used to be in church, and I say in church because they ain't in Christ. Yes, amen. There's a lot of people in church, but they're not in Christ. When you see them falling back, don't get upset. Amen. He already warned you it was going to happen. Right. He already let you know yeah, yeah. that it was going to happen. Amen. But be the remnant. Yeah. Be the part that's left over for God. Amen. Be that person who will still stand for God if nobody else will stand. Now let's look at a man who did that. Amen. Look at uh, 1 Kings chapter 19. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Kings chapter 19. And we're going to start at verse 11. All right. Hallelujah. says, go out and stand before me on the mountain, the Lord told him. And as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by, and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose, but the Lord was not in that wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was yeah. not in the earthquake. Amen. This is a very familiar passage here. Yeah. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a sound of a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in a cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And a voice said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah replied, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty. But the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars, and killed every one of your prophets. I am the only one left. My God. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. Uh -huh. Then the Lord told him, go back. The same way you came and traveled to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrived there, anoint Haziel to be king of Aram. Then anoint Jehu, son of Nishi, mm -hmm. to be king of Israel, mm -hmm. and anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, yeah. from the town of Abel, Huel, to replace you as my prophet. Anyone who escapes from Haziel will be killed by Jehu. Yep. And those who escape Jehu will be killed yep. by Elijah. That's right. Yet I will preserve 7,000 others in Israel who have never bowed to Baal or kissed him. Amen. All right, so we see a man. Actually, before I go into that, Turn now to Romans chapter 11. So I'm going to tie this in together. Romans chapter 11. 
Look at verse 1. Or look 1 through 5. I ask then, has God rejected his own people, the nation of Israel? Of course not. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, and a member of the tribe of Benjamin. No, God has not rejected his own people whom he chose from the very beginning. Do you realize what the scripture says about this? Elijah the prophet complained to God about the people of Israel and said, Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars. I am the only one left and now they are trying to kill me too. Now, do you remember God's reply? He said, no, I have 7,000 others who have never bowed down to Baal. It is the same today for a few of the people of Israel have remained faithful because of God's grace, his undeserved kindness is choosing them. So now we're looking at the spiritual remnant that God has here on this earth. This is a small group of God-fearing people who survived persecutions inspired by Satan that's coming in the near future. Amen. Those who prevailed are those who prevail are promised Come on. wonderful blessings and rewards in faithfulness. Amen. In Romans eleven. Verse 1 through 5, Paul tells us about Elijah's complaint to God about being the only one left who had not turned his back on God. God's response was found in 1 Kings. From this exchange, the apostle concludes that a remnant still exists. Yes. A remnant according to the election of grace. Okay. Did they have grace back then? Amen. Did they have grace back then in the, in the Old Testament? In Kings? Did they have grace? Uh -huh. They had grace? Uh -huh. Not like we have grace. Uh -huh. I'm talking about the dispensation. Yeah. We're they were in the dispensation of grace? Mm -hmm. No. We're in the dispensation of grace. The spiritual remnant is what several New Testament believers term the elect. Those who have been called and chosen by God through grace those elect have received spiritual redemption. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. Salvation. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. And a relationship with God. Yeah. That is me. Yeah. So, let's look at Elijah here. I'm happy to be a part of the elect. I'm happy to be the redempted. Yeah. The one who God has redeemed. The one who he saved. The one he yeah. gave salvation. The one yeah. who now lives in the dispensation. Yeah. Of grace. Yeah, right. and, uh, let's look at Elijah in verse 14. Elijah thought that he was the only one left, that he was the only leftover, that he was the only remnant. Uh -huh. He thought that he was the only one left to stand. My question to you is are you ready to stand alone? Amen. If everybody else won't stand for God, come on. Will you? Yeah. Be willing to stand alone. Hallelujah. If you're the only leftover in your family, are you ready to serve God and be the only one Amen. who's standing in your family? Amen. And verse 15 and 16, uh, he says that he told him to turn back and go back the same way he came. Are you ready to turn back as God's remnant? God sent Elijah back the same way that he came and gave him specific instructions. He sent Elijah back to the wilderness. Notice he did not say go through the wilderness. He said go back to the wilderness. You have to stay in the wilderness and you have to work while you're there. What God gives you in the will, when God gives you a wilderness assignment, are you ready to go back and stay there? Come on. I'm talking about the assignment of going back getting somebody else that's in the wilderness. Amen. And then anointing them and helping them come through the wilderness. Amen. 
If God told you to go back the same way you came, and you just came through that wilderness, are you willing to go back the same way you came? Dealing with the same stuff that you dealt with, the same people that you dealt with, the same thing over and over that you dealt with while you were in the wilderness. Will you be Elijah? Will you go back? Will you listen to the instructions of God? Are you willing as a remnant to do what God has instructed you to do? Now because of you with your leftover selves, <laughs> yeah. will you still be obedient to God's instructions so that he can save others? Even though you thought you were standing alone, God had others on preserve so that you wouldn't have to be alone. He don't always let you know what his plan is while you're in the wilderness and experiencing difficult times in our lives. But God always has something working in the background that he doesn't always reveal to us. Now, Elijah thought he was the only one, but God knew that he had 7,000 others. And sometimes we feel like we're the only one. Amen. But Amen. there's 7,000 other folk the that's right there with us. Right. So don't feel alone. That's it. Don't feel alone. Say, I'm God's leftover, God's and I'm ready to be used for his glory. When I meditated on this message, I saw three particular things. First, I saw that Jesus gathered up the leftovers so that none was wasted. He used those leftovers to bless someone else. Jesus redeems us so that we will not be wasted. So that he can use us to be a blessing to somebody else. He did not just save us for ourselves. Somebody in our family needs us. Somebody needed us to be saved because they need to find their way. They need to see you as that remnant. They need to look at you and say, if he can save her, then I know there's hope for me. No matter how bad I am, no matter how the situation looks, but I can get out. If God pulled her out, he can pull me out. Amen. Number two, a new creature in Christ, as a new creature in Christ, we should not look the same to people Amen. that used to know us. Amen. So if you are a new creature, you should look new. Amen. Something about you should be new. Amen. You can't go back to the same people that you used to cuss with Come and still cuss like they cuss. My God. You can't go well, back to the same people that you used to get high with and woo! ask them for a joint. My God. You can't go back to the same people. Can't do it. Go back. You just can't do it. So, what's new about you? Number three, the results of leftover transformation gives honor to God. God can transform and use the leftovers. So, with that said, we ought to praise God. Yes. We ought to give him glory. My God. We ought to let him know that he's worthy because he saved our leftovers. And not only did he just save our leftovers, he's using our leftovers to bless somebody else. See, I remember when my mom would cook Christmas dinner. She would always tell us, come on back up here tomorrow and eat the rest of this food up. Let me say something about leftovers. For me, they taste better the next day. After they set in the refrigerator and then you put them back on that heat, it's something about the flavor the next day. You may feel like a leftover and maybe you've gotten a little cold when it comes to the things of God. Amen. Or maybe you haven't been in your word like you should have been in your Amen. word. And maybe you haven't prayed like you think you should have prayed. And spent time in worship like you should have spent time in worship. You've gotten a little cold. Well, let me assure you, God is ready to put you in the oven. He's ready to heat you up again. All you have to do is bring him your leftovers. What's left 
of your worship? What's left of your praise? What's left of your tears? What's left of your weariness? Whatever you have left, bring it to God. When God puts you back in the oven, you will be better than you were before. You'll be better. Amen. Better than when you cried. Better than when you broke down. Better than you when you got sick. Better when you was left. You have to go through the process. Whatever the process is. But when you come out. Amen. <laughs> you will be well seasoned. The leftovers always seem to taste better the next day. It seems if you can you can taste the seasons better from the and the flavor pops in your mouth. That's because the seasons that got all up in the meat now. The seasons that got all up in the food. You know what I'm saying? It ain't just on the surface now. It's the got all up inside the stuff. And it's the change the flavor of the thing. So if you're not a little cold, it's okay. God's gonna use you as a leftover. And when you come through as Yes. You're going to come out better than you was before. You're going to have more season. You're going to have more flavor. Yes. You're going to have a strawberry yes. culture. You're going to yes. recognize your call. You're going to know who you are. You're going to walk the way God called you to walk. You're going to do what God called you to do. Oh, ain't nothing wrong with a left over. Tell somebody, thank God for the leftovers. Just go through the process. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for the leftovers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for the leftovers. Thank God Sometimes we just go along to get along yes. uh, because we don't want to feel left out. Yeah. And uh, so we put ourselves in situations that we know we shouldn't Jesus. be in yeah. uh, because everybody else is okay, because everybody else is doing it. Yeah. And so we just got to go along to get along. But, uh, but God honors yes. the folks yeah. that are different. Yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, he made you different yeah. for a reason. That's why you didn't fit in. That's why you didn't get along. That's why it didn't feel comfortable for you when you was doing some of what you was doing. Because see, when God starts to call you and pull on you, He starts to change you from the inside out. And so you start not agreeing with what's going on around you because of what He put in you. And so if you can hold on to that little piece that's left behind. Come on. Yes, 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 yes. Come on. If, if you can just hold on to that glimpse of hope. Come on. Yes. That God. glimpse of it can change. Yes. Yes. It can be better. It will be better. I can be different. Yes. I don't have to be like what everybody say I'm supposed to be. I, right. I can be who God has called me to My be. God. I can do that. Yes. Yes. If you can hold on to that, I'm telling you, God will bless you yes. like, like never before. before. That's it. Like never before. So we thank God for the October message. Yes. Because I don't know about you, but I once was. Lost. But now I'm found. I once was blind. And you know, like she said, I didn't know I was blind until I could see it. Come on, come on. That's it. And then when I could see, I said, man, That's it. why did I do this so long ago? My God. But you know what? The time wasn't wasted. 
because it's what I went through that allowed us to be who we are right now. Yes. See, we didn't go through all the crazies that you've been through. Oh my God, you wouldn't be you. And so we love you just the way that you are. Amen. Amen. So we just at this time, amen, and if you need a change, you feel like yeah. you need to be that example. Yeah. You feel like you need that change. Yeah. You feel like that you need to start anew. Come on, come on. New season. And to put back the old things. Yes. Yes. If your old things still haven't passed away yet. And they're still dominating your thought process, or they're still dominating what you do, or still dominating how you think. We just want you to come so we can pray. Amen. We just want to pray and plead the blood of Jesus with you because guess what? When we pray, I believe that God will transform everything that's in you that's old, He'll take away. And everything that's new, He will allow you to move forward in. It's the grace of God. That it's just not unmerited and undeserved. Yes. It's the grace of God that empowers us. Yes. So when she talked about you not wanting to do what you want to do right now, it's not because your flesh don't want to do it no more. It's just because of the grace of God overpowers your flesh. Yes. And it puts your, it puts your flesh under your foot. Yes. And so now you don't even have a desire to do craziness no more yes. because of the grace of God that's in you. Yes. I'll tell you, if it wasn't for the grace, I'd be crazy right now. Hallelujah. I don't know. I'm telling you, I was, I, you know, I didn't get my fair share, amen. Pulling the cards out. And I'm sure most of us have. Oh, yeah. But I'm not now not doing those things because of my own power and my own ability. It's only because of the grace of God that I don't desire to do those things that I used to do. So if you need something on this morning, we just ask that you come. Yes, Lord. And we just want to pray. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. If anybody doesn't know Christ, you yes, say, listen, Lord. I just.